When switching from one programming language to another, it is often easy to focus on the differences when in fact, if we take a step back, the languages are often more similar than different. In this episode, we will look at how we can make decisions in our code using, for example, if statements. But before we do that, we're going to look at some similarities. Behind me, we can see the task that we will use as a base when looking at decision structures in Java. We will have to make a decision on what message to display depending on uh, the value stored in a variable called number of errors. But how should we do this then? The flowchart that we can now see behind me is how we would solve it in Python. And in fact, this is also how we will solve it in Java. So all we have learned about making decisions in our code still applies. We will only need to learn the syntax of how to do it in Java. Now let us look at some code. Yes, as in the previous episode, I have prepared a project. And as you can see, I have also added the corresponding Python code. So let's take a look and see if we can start with writing an if statement in Java. I'll write the code first and then afterwards we can talk about it. And before I explain it, maybe we should run it and see that everything works. And we can see that, yes, you're almost there. Just one more error to fix. But let's have a look at uh, what we did here. So maybe you remember that if we declare variables in Java, we have to specify the data type. And all instructions should end with a semicolon. But now on to the if statement. So we can see here that the condition in Java is encapsulated in parentheses. And we must do this. So we must have parentheses around the condition. And then instead of having the colon and indenting the code on the next line, sing signaling that this belongs to the if statement, what we do in Java is that we have a code block which is indicated by these curly brackets. So we have one opening curly bracket and one closing curly bracket. So this code block in blue here belongs to the if statement. And then if we take a look at the elif from Python, it's called else if in Java. And we can see that here too, uh, the condition is in parentheses. And the else works the same way. We have the else if none of the first two uh, is true, then we go into the else. And here we also have a code block. And in each of them, we print the message. So we can see that they are fairly similar. There are a few differences. Uh, we use code blocks and we have parentheses around the condition. Now let's move on to another way that we can make decisions in our Java code. In Java, we have something called switch statements, and they are similar to something that we can do in Python 3.10, which is structural pattern matching. Uh, I will write the code for the switch first, and then we can talk about it. And uh, so just wait one second while I write it. So what we can see on the screen now is another way of making decisions in Java using a switch statement. And we can see we declared number of errors again. I commented it out up here. So we start from fresh. And what we're doing here is that we're using a switch to look at number of errors. 
And if number of errors is exactly zero, then we would go into this case zero and we would print uh, our message and then we will break out of the switch. And the same goes if the value stored in number of errors is equal to one, then we will go into case one, print our message and break out of the switch. And if none of these match, we have a default case that executes for all other values of uh, stored in number of errors. And let's try to run it and see how it works. So we can see that we print our message here too. But watch what happens if I delete this break here. I just want to show you why we need the break statement. So if I run it again, we can see that it now prints both this message and the next one. So if we don't have the break statement in our case, it will fall through to the next case. So we execute one because number of errors is one, and then we fall through into the next one and continue there until we find the break. So that is why we need to have a break statement in a switch. So this is the second way we can make decisions in, in Java. There is one more thing to mention about switches, and that is that they don't work for all data types. Uh, for now, um, I will say that they work with integers and strings, and later on you will see that they also work with something called enums, for example. Uh, but for now, uh, with the knowledge that we have, Let's just say that they work with ints or integers and strings. But Java has one other trick up its sleeves when it comes to making decisions uh, in the code. And that is something called switch expressions. And as we might guess from the name, it is similar to the switch statement. Uh, but I will write it first and then I will talk about it. So we can see here on the screen that it looks a little bit different, but at the same time similar. Uh, we can see that we have the, the cases, case zero, case one, and we also have the default. But what is actually happening here is that we are using the switch expression, looking at number of errors to say that, all right, if it is zero, then take this string and store it into message, to the variable message. And then in case of a one in number of errors, take this string instead and store it into our message. And if it's not zero or one, take the last one, the default one, and store that in message. And then afterwards, when we have done this assignment to our variable message, we use it to print it. So it works a little bit different. If you would do a flowchart of it, it would look a little bit different. But generally speaking, it is a way of making a decision in our code. So I thought that I would show it here. Um, one more thing before we end. I, I forgot to say that we don't use the colon. Instead, we use the arrow here. So we can see that that is a difference if you compare to the to the other switch. But that was it for uh, making decisions in your Java code.